All right, over here in the bottom right, a player on the team TSL, a good Zerg player, an aggressive Zerg, and a very smart one. He is TSA Levibar. Now his opponent at the top right of the map, a Terran player, known for his usage of the Tier 1 unit. Couldn't quite squeeze that one out as well as I wanted to. But, of course, he is the King of Marines. Now, earlier what I wanted to talk about TSL, when I said that I would talk about TSL later when I was talking about TSL Revival, I was talking to one of the foreign fans that was here. So I do that a lot. If you come down to the studio, I'll talk to you. I'll tell you um, what I think about the matches. You can tell me. I'll ask you where you're from. I'll have a nice little chat. Maybe go eat pizza later. I'm serious. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was talking to him and I said, TSL Revival is actually one of the players I think on TSL that has a lot of potential. A lot of the players on TSL were picked from the start because of their skill. And for a while, TSL was one of the scariest teams out there because it had like all the best players when it formed. Grabbed all the best players, stuck them in a team, and everyone was like, whoa, TSL is going to be the best team forever. But then a lot of those players have started to slump until we got a player called TSL Revival. And he's kind of being like the revival of TSL. And I kind of want to ask him what his ID means if he planned it that way. I really do want to ask him. Maybe I'll get someone to ask him afterwards um, what his ID means to him. Because it would be kind of cool if he actually planned it that way. Now, Marine King is doing the identical build to what he did last time. 14 CC. Much easier to do on this map because you still have the ramp. But even so, the ramp is very wide once the rocks fall. And the rocks are not like regular destructible rocks. They don't have as much armor. And, uh, you know, they don't have as much hit points either. So they're not regular destructible rocks. They fall pretty quickly. So someone like Revival puts on some pressure. I have to be prepared for that. So Marine King, I think, after the way last game went, He's probably going to play it a little bit safer this time. Drone wants to know if he's getting his two gases immediately. Drone actually going to get walled in here. So two barracks coming out for Marine King this time. So he's not going to be following it up with quick tech instead. He's going to be going for that barracks pressure. Now notice that Revival <clears throat> excuse me, actually went for that natural expansion rather than the backdoor one. That's because it has more minerals. Now like I was actually, I found out recently that Refinery is a little bit closer to that commander, so he's making it at that backdoor location because he can get more gas there and a lot more over time. Poor drone, he can't leave. He's like that uh, fly that gets into your house or something, and then he knows the way out, but he it, he like gets so confused. He's he knows the way out, but there's a window there. He just can't see it. That drone just can't see that supply depot, man. He is trying to find his way out, but it's just never gonna happen. And the drone, at the very least, is like, well, at least I'll steal your minerals. You'll never see these again. Up here. He does see, of course, that Marine King is only going to take that one gas. That's pretty handy. Knowing the barracks, the CC first, and that he's only taking one gas are... Those are some pretty big victories for one drone scout. So that drone, despite dying, was able to give him a lot of information. Now, Revival looks like he is going to be getting Zergling speed here pretty soon. There he goes. Just wanted to make sure he was, because sometimes you see builds where players don't do that. Do unusual different things. Now, Revival, having that front expansion is going to pay off for him a lot in the long run, and it also makes it so that he can take a third. Now, it's really cool because he's taking that, instead of taking the backdoor expansion at first, after scouting the CC first, that's when he made it. He saw the CC, then he made the natural there. Now he knows, okay, well, if things get dirty and I need to take a third base and my opponent's got a lot of units out, I can just take my backdoor expansion and I'll be on three bases. So I won't have to defend a far away expansion. Whereas, kind of, if you take the back base, your opponent kind of gets that front of your base location, kind of sieges up there and gets prepared. He kind of has control of your natural. It's very difficult to move out, especially if your units are in your main. They're trying to run down a ramp where your opponent's got kind of a contain on. You've got a lot of Marines out there. So I like his choice uh, of going for the front door expansion. I'm pretty sure that was a reaction to seeing the command center first. Because if your opponent goes CC first, why not? There's no reason to have to take the back door base. All right. Baneling Nest has been started. Another reason why he may have taken that base was to put on some really awesome Baneling aggression, and he does have a lot of Zerglings out on the map. He has 18 of them out, in fact, and I thought that might have been just to kind of control the map, but 18 is a bit more than just controlling the map, and Speed is going to finish that Baneling that's finishing as well, but if he puts on some aggression with these Banelings, it's not going to be an all-in. He is making that third base back at that backdoor expansion. It's going to be really easy for him to just fall back to that if he doesn't really do any damage with this. And actually, he's going to make a Roach Warren as well. That's really interesting. Zergling's going to come up here and scout. I think if he sees the bunker, he's going to think, maybe I don't want to do this after all. I probably don't want to put on any Baneling aggression just yet. As you can see, Marine King dropping some mules there at his backdoor base. Starting to get fully saturated. 
I'm gonna get some super fast medevacs out here. And unfortunately for Revival, he's not gonna have a lair in time to really deal with those. So, um, I mean, when the dropships come out and you've got Stim and you don't have Mutas and you don't even have a lair, it gets very, very difficult to deal with. The Mutas really shut down the dropship harass completely once they get out. As you can see, Marine King just making purely Marines, as is his style, as is his namesake. Two dropships about to pop. He's got a lot of Marines out. Stim will finish around the same time as those drops, so nice timing on that. Should be able to pull about 16 Marines into those dropships. How many Marines does he have out right now? 19, so just having a few extra ones. Maybe he wants to leave them in the bunker as he goes and drops. Now, Revival has several Overlords to spot for this, so he's going to see it coming. He may want to morph some Banelings to help deal with this, because this is, I mean, two dropships full of Marines is a lot of Marines. That's 16 Marines, and if you don't have any Banelings to deal with that, you might not be able to deal with it at all. And here they come. The Speeling's not even quite here in time, and he still has only those 18 Zerlings that he had before. And that's definitely not enough to deal with this. He's making some roaches, but they may pop out in a bad spot. And Marine King is actually just going to target down this hatchery. There's nothing Revival can do. Of course, he can fall back to his hatchery. He's got the backdoor expansion. But losing this hatchery are pretty huge. Lost for him. Now, these Zerlings are going to try to attack here. But they're not going to be able to get us around. That was a terrible idea from Revival. Has a few roaches out. A few more popping. But they're coming out right on top of these Marines. And of course, they're dying immediately. Now, Marine King having a pretty good position here. These Zerlings doing their best. But the roaches helping out. And Marine King realizing he should probably just lift. Does, in fact, lift. Now he's going to go into the main. And with no Mutas out to greet him, he's going to be able to do this relatively easily. going to drop immediately so he can heal up his units before attacking. He may just kill some Zerlings and lift again. Would not be surprised to see him do that. Actually going to kill a Roach as well. Marine King looking pretty strong here. May go for the Baneling Nest. But looks like he's just going to kind of work his way over there. He's going to lift up. Most likely doesn't want to lose any more of these Marines. Nice Marine Micro, though. I mean, he is the king of marines. I wouldn't expect anything less from him. And two more dropships coming in. He may just end this game right now. He just has too many units, and even with the siege tank there, the tank does have siege mode as well. So if mainly start coming out, I mean, that's, that's just it. That's GG. He just didn't have enough units. That was crazy. You suspect that your opponent is going to skip a lair. You do a build like that. You control your marines like Marine King can. You win the game, and that's it. Marine King looking very satisfied with himself there. I think he just regained his confidence. He was looking a little shaken after that first game, but now he's looking a lot better. Definitely, definitely looking better. All right. So we're going to jump into that third map, which is going to infect the Zalnaga Caverns. This is going to be the last matchup today, guys. Who's going to take game three? Will Marine King do it? I don't know. I like that strategy by him, though. I have to say, as soon as he found out that his opponent didn't have a lair, he just took all the units he had back at his base and just brought them. He was like, I, if I can land these units, I will end the game. And I could just leave these medevacs at home and just kind of think about taking a third, but he just decided to end the game because he could. I like that, I like that idea. It's not like a, it was his overarching strategy. He just reacted. You have no lair. You, make, you took a third base, and I took it out easily. I took out a lot of your Zerlings. All I gotta do is bring in two more dropships and units, and you're gonna die. And that's exactly what he did. So the map, like I said, will be Zalnaga Caverns, a very standard map, the most commonly played map in esports, or well, in StarCraft 2 anyways. The countdown has started. Who's gonna take game three? Will Revival do it, or will Marine King, the favorite in this series, crush him down like he did last game? Let's find out here at the GSL Super Tournament.